So here's an approach for finding the areas of these shapes. First one's about an equilateral triangle, side length A. So it's a sort of trigonometry question. Say the way I'd go about it is to drop this perpendicular and then say, well, I know this is 60 degrees, so I want to find this length and this length. And if I found both of those, then I know the base and the height of this triangle. OK, um, there's a triangle that I know about that has a 60 degree angle in it of sides, sides like this, he says, labelling the sides wrong. Uh, one root three two. So I think this means that this is a over two over here and this is root three a over two over here. Okay so I've got the height of my triangle is root three a over two and I've got my base of my triangle is a I suppose for this whole length. This length here is a over two. Okay so the area of this of this shape is going to be root three a squared over four Quick sanity check. This depends on um, a squared. Um, it's got an a squared in it, which makes sense because if I make a twice as big, then I expect this triangle to get four times as large because areas um, go like the square of length. Okay. Um, next question. Now instead of the side length of the equilateral triangle, it's the circle of it's a circle of radius a. Oh, that was a bad picture. Oh well, do my best. Um, so I draw something like this and I'd say, well, you know, the radius is A. So now I've got a triangle that looks like this and I do a little bit, again, I think I'd drop a perpendicular and I'd say, well, this is A. Uh, and now I know that, I think I know that this is, uh, what is that? That is 60 degrees because the other angle is 30 degrees. And I think very carefully. Um, have I got all this right so far? I'm not sure. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. I know the bottom is a over two. Okay, so people in the chat are always really clever. The, the bottom was a over two in this one. Quicker argument because it's an equilateral triangle and this is half of one of the sides. Yeah, it's this is it's hard. <laughs> it's hard doing it the best way. Um, okay, can we do this one really quickly as well? Are you can be really quick at this. Yeah, people are gonna be really quick at this. We could drop a perpendicular, but someone in chat has already told me that I should be, I should be up and using the 120 degree angle here. I'm talking about half sine 120 degrees a squared and then there are three of these little triangles if I was really great at geometry I would have thought of that straight away I just really like right angle triangles okay I've got to work out sine 120 degrees do I know sine 120 degrees it's the same thing as sine 60 degrees it's the sort of thing I used to know really well is it three root three root is this one going to be three root three over four a squared three times as big Someone in chat will tell me if that's wrong. And most people have said the answer should be five. Um, do you want to tell me in chat what you think the point that's closest to the origin is? Um, I bet you all think the same point. Probably because we've got the same answer of five. The answer is five, by the way. Yeah, this, is, this is C. Um, we're going to work out why. Um, do you want to tell me in chat why you've how you got to this answer? What's your what's your what's your reasoning? What sort of steps should we take? You know, in these math problems, part of the skill is to look at a question that's pretty unfamiliar. You've probably never been asked this precise thing before. You know, find out which which points closest to the origin for this circle, and to think how on earth am I going to get started? What steps can I do when I see a problem like this? If you're up against something unfamiliar and you need to decide how to get started, um, my personal advice is always just start writing down true statements. Um, so here I, I look at the equation for the circle and I start just trying to do things to it, just to play with it and see what I can work out. Like, is the origin just on this circle? If the origin's on this circle, then we're done. Um, the origin's not on this circle, but it was worth checking. Okay. Um, Laura says, complete the square and find the center. I think that's a really good, I think that's a really good approach. I'm gonna try and do that now on the board. Okay. So to start off with, we're going to take the equation for this circle and try and complete the square. So I think this is going to be x plus 3 squared plus y plus 4 squared. Um, I'm thinking about the x squared plus 6x in here. I'm thinking about the y squared plus 8y in here. And now I need to think about the number on the end. Um, I'm going to subtract 9 from this term and subtract 16 from this term so that it's all still equal. Um, and then I can work out that this is a circle, if I simplify this a bit, this is a circle with radius 10 
and center minus three minus four. Okay, I think in most geometry questions, I want to draw a picture of what that looks like. Um, so I want to draw a picture to say, ha, this looks like a circle with center at minus three minus four. And radius 10 is huge. Radius 10 is so large that the origin is somewhere inside this circle. The origin is inside this circle because the origin is only a distance of five away from this point. The radius is 10, that's massive. Um, the, set, the origin is only five away. Okay, so the origin is somewhere inside. And now here's the clever bit that I think everyone spotted in the chat. The closest point to the circle, to the origin, is in fact the opposite point over here, where the circle loops around the origin and comes around on this side. It's not somewhere over here. Um, it's where, where this line between the center and the origin meets the circle again. Okay. Um, and now we just need to find out what that point is. And I think people have spotted that uh, people have spotted that the origin is halfway along that line. That this is this distance is five, and the radius is ten, which means we need to go another five along over on this side. Okay, so if we go another five along on that side, well, we end up at point three four, um, or yeah, probably three four, or maybe yeah, from three four. Um, but of course, we're not actually asked for the coordinates; we're just asked for the, the length, and that's five. Okay, I guess ten has been included to catch people out. I don't think it actually caught anyone out in chat. Yeah, I think chat has come up with four different methods for this question. <gasps> Five. Okay, five. And the fifth one I really like. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Right, so I'm going to go through chat and I'm going to, I'm going to write up summaries of the five methods I think I've seen. Um, okay, so let's, let's, let's go. Method one, line between centres. Quite like that. That looks like a pretty new method. Right, okay. Um, and then there's a, someone else says complete the square. I'm copying this out so I don't quite understand it yet, but we'll get we'll get there. Complete the square, find line, complete the square, find line. This looks a bit similar to method one actually. Maybe complete the square. Could be interesting, could be interesting. Okay. Um, gradient of line. So it says gradient of line linking centers. Sketch and similar triangles. Someone says. Find equation for the line. Find an equation for the line and intersect with the with the first one. That sounds like a different method. Um, uh, drew the graph. I drew the graph, and it was obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting that up. Uh, so that's a, that's a direct quote from chat. If you're watching back on YouTube, this is the sort of solid gold that chat gives me. I love it. Brilliant. Thank you so much, whoever typed that in there. You're anonymous, which I respect, but yeah, lovely. Right, okay. Um, I think all of these work. Um, okay, so I guess the line between centres method is, or maybe this is the same as number five, is you might find... An equation for that line or you might draw a picture of that line drawing joining the two centers um so i think this is my tr is my tr da -da -da, five comma four and it's got radius two and this one's uh one comma one and it's got radius one uh, and then think about this line joining the centers because it feels like again maybe this isn't rigorous um but it feels like the closest point is where that line meets this, which circle do I want to meet? I want to meet this circle. I want this point. Um, and some people thought about, wanted to start thinking about the gradient of this line or similar triangles. I think similar triangles would be something like you draw on this big triangle and then think about this triangle being a similar triangle. I really like that. Similar triangles is a good fact. So you could take this big triangle. I guess its sides are four and three. Um, so this whole distance between the centers Let's change color. This distance between the centers is five. And this distance for the radius is two. 
So we've got similar triangles over there. I quite like that. That seems most similar to how I think I did this question the first time I saw it. Goodness knows, first time I saw it. Um, I quite like, yeah, so there's a bit of method four in there as well. I quite like, I drew the graph and it was obvious, because once you've drawn this picture, you can start thinking about these different options. Um, I think someone said I just checked all of the options, only one of them was even slightly plausible, which is which is a reasonable approach, I think, for a multiple choice question. Um, okay, so, right, where are we? I think I'm going to do similar triangles for this one, since I just said it was a good method. Um, I'm going to take the point five, four, and I'm going to subtract, because I want to go, I want to subtract off two fifths of the vector four, three. So that's my vector four, three. The vector four, three joins this center to this center. That's the blue line going that way, I suppose. That's the vector four, three. Um, but I want to go back the other way and I want to go two fifths as far. So I want to do five, four minus two fifths of four, three. And that gets me A, which is this. Okay, many other ways possible as well. I think, brilliant. I love that we got six kind of different methods out of chat. Thank you, chat. I suppose we could write it in terms of coordinates or we could write it in terms of vectors, um, but it's not going to be that that different. Okay, it's going to depend on A, isn't it? So I'm going to turn on Y and X and also A because it's defined by something to do with this point Q, which is the point which, thanks for spotting the typo everyone, is A, A squared. Okay, so we can find the equation for that line. Um, then we're going to talk about what values of A do you exactly get this kind of normal thing to, to exactly go through this point P over here. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, and then they want to know in part three, the length of QP squared uh, as a function of A. Um, so we're going to start thinking about that distance. And I think we've stopped thinking about the line L at this point. So the first, first two parts seem to be about the line L, but then quite part three seems to not be about that normal anymore. So we found where you drop the normal. The first part, first part seems to be about dropping a normal from a point to the parabola. So we'll find this point Q where the, where the um, tangent and the line joining PQ are at right angles. Um, and then these parts three and four seem to be talking about um, a point, uh, finding the point that's closest to, find the point for which QP is smallest. It sort of feels like that might be the same, same point off the top of my head. Okay, um, I'm going to start trying to do this question. Um, I've got this kind of way of writing down, I don't know, there's lots of ways you might write down the equation of L. Um, my preferred method, I think, is to write down something like y minus y value is equal to gradient which I don't know yet, um, x minus x value at this point, because it's a, a squared. Now I've got to think really carefully about what the gradient is there. So I've got two steps, I think. Um, I know that this is normal, so it's um, the gradient of this is the gradient of the tangent, but then minus one, minus one over that. So I'm sort of thinking about this two step of, I need to find the gradient of the tangent and then do minus one over that because I know this is at right angles. Okay, so I should find the gradient of the tangent. This is my to-do list. Gradient of tangent uh, and then do minus one over that. Okay, gradient of tangent, that sounds like do the derivative of this um, parabola. If you differentiate y equals x squared, you get 2x. x is equal to a at the point q, so this is 2a. So I guess this is going to be minus 1 over 2a. And my line is going to be y minus a squared is minus 1 over 2a, x minus a, I think. OK. So, part a. Um, part a, that's part, part 1, I think. Um, part 2. When does this go through P? So now I guess I've got to check whether the point P, which is 0, 1, is, so here's my question, I'm going to write in between the lines, it's going to be a bit messy. Um, is the point P on the line? The point P on the line is on the line if 1 minus A squared is equal to 1 minus 2A and the next is 0 minus A. Okay, um, so if X, if X is 0 and Y equals 1 lies on this line, this L, then P is on the line. 
which is pretty good. Um, and I think there's some cancelling going on, maybe, or you know, I can I can rearrange this equation. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put solve. Cool. Okay. Someone in chat will tell me how to solve this equation. I think I can solve this equation. Is it plus or minus one over root two? I think I can solve that. Um, I thought it was maybe going to be a quadratic, and then it turned out to maybe be quite an easy quadratic. I think. Okay. Um, does it make sense that there are two solutions? I think it does make sense that there are two solutions because I'm expecting one that's over here somewhere, and one that's over here somewhere. Oh, I've missed. There we go. So I was kind of expecting a kind of plus or minus thing by like the symmetry of this curve, and I'm thinking about whether this normal goes through p or not. Okay. I was kind of expecting this plus or minus thing. Maybe if I really thought about it, I was expecting it to be less than one from this picture, but I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. So that's the first two parts of the question, talking about this line. Pretty good stuff. We've done some calculations. Um, we had to think a little bit about how we were going to find the gradient of this normal, but I think checking that P was on the line was, was not too bad. Okay. Part three. Now they want something different. They want the distance QP squared. Okay. Um, so I've got two, I know the coordinates of P and I know the coordinates of Q, so I'm kind of relaxing a bit um, because finding the distance between two points where I know the coordinates is something that I do quite a lot in A level, right? It's something that you know you learn is, as soon as you know where points are, you learn about the finding of the distance between points. This is going to be Pythagoras, right? Okay, um, so what do I need to do? I need to do the difference of the Y coordinates squared plus the difference of the x coordinates squared okay i think that's my expression for the length qp squared do i want the square of that yeah i want it's got a squared in the question so i want the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides someone's a bit worried about a equals zero and i sort of agree um, when a equals zero this is all a bit weird Ooh. Ooh, do we need to worry about a equals zero as well? So my equation, my equations don't really work if a equals zero because I've got this gradient being minus one over two a. Interesting. Oh, when a equals zero, my maths doesn't work. I should have been more careful and said, I can't do minus one over that if a equals zero. Um, and actually I've reread the question and the way it's been written, I think if a equals zero, then the tangent would be just the x-axis and perpendicular to the tangent would be this line coming up here, which does go through p. So I think they've caught me out that I forgot about a being zero being a possibility. So if, if a equals zero, then I've missed a solution by dividing by a. My equations work if a is not zero, um, but uh, I, missed a, I missed a solution for a equals zero, I think. Cool, okay. So three solutions for part two. Oh, right, okay. Um, part three, let's move on. Um, part three, um, I've just happily written down Pythagoras, and I'm not dividing my zero anymore, so I think I'm okay. Um, QP squared is going to be a squared minus one squared plus a squared. Okay, in terms of a, good stuff. Um, and now I want to find the value of a for which this distance, QP, is smallest. Um, and here, I'm going to use a trick that I've seen before, I guess, that if QP is smallest, so QP is positive, so it's smallest when QP squared is smallest. I'm being quite careful here. Um, so because it, it's smallest when its square is smallest, because it's a positive number, um, and its square is easier to work with. I just worked out its square. I don't really want to do the square root of this and start working with the square root of this. I just want to work with the square of this. Um, this is something that you can use in other problems, by the way. But if you want to minimize something that's a positive number, then you can minimize its square. I'm being really careful about saying positive number in here, and maybe you might, might like to think about why I'm being so careful to say, positive number all the time. Um, hint, this is not true if you include negative numbers as well. Okay, right. So I want this to be small, and I can make it small by making it square nice and small. Okay, so its square was this, which was a squared 
squared minus 2a squared plus a squared plus 1, which is a squared squared minus a squared plus 1, which I'm going to leave as a squared squared because this to me looks like a quadratic. It looks like a quadratic in a squared. Um, and I can, I'm can i going to try and make this quadratic nice and small um, and I could complete the square at this stage or I could differentiate it as a quadratic, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of it as the quadratic x squared minus x plus 1 where x equals a squared is some positive number. Okay, so I want to minimise this quadratic. That sounds like the sort of thing that I can do, right? <laughs> um, so maybe I'll complete the square this time. I would normally differentiate it, but I'm feeling like doing it a bit differently this time. Um, I guess it's this plus three quarters. Um, so that's minimized when x is equal to half. So I want a squared to be a half. I'm working right to left, sorry. I want a squared to be a half. So I want a to be one over root two. Hey, that's the same value that we got in part two. Maybe that's what this question is getting at. That's kind of cool. There we go, so that's my value of a. And it's all kind of related, look. The, the point we found by dropping a perpendicular to the curve, turns out this one is a local minimum of, of how close you are to the curve. I think it turns out that that point at the origin is a local maximum for how far away you are from the curve. But there's this relationship between whether the normal goes through P and whether the line PQ um, is, is a stationary point in terms of its length. Okay, I managed to save that despite missing the point P halfway through. Thank you chat again for fixing another mistake that I've made on a live stream. It's great fun this. Oh, we've got one last part of this question. Um, and this is kind of freestyle. Um, tell me about any point in the XY plane that's not on the curve um, such that the length RQ is smallest for a unique value of A. So a unique point on the curve is closest. Um, oh yeah, goodness me. Plus or minus over here. Oops, thank you chat. Um, Matt's gone for a point naught minus one and Matt's got a snappy reason for that to say that if you take a point down here, then the closest point is the origin and any other point on the curve, claims Matt, is further away in both the x direction and the y direction. So this, this has a difference of, this is naught squared plus one squared, square distance, and Matt's point, naught minus one. But any point over here will be further away in the x direction and the y direction. Um, okay, right, loads of great suggestions. Um, people have spotted that this is a right angle. Where's the right angle? Find the right angle. Yeah, right angle. So this is a um, right angle triangle. And it's right angle in a circle. That means that this line PQ is the diameter. And once we know the diameter, we know where the center is. The center is uh, going to be halfway along that line midpoint of, oh goodness me, midpoint of PQ um, and the radius is going to be half the length of PQ. There might be a better way of saying that but uh, yeah that's going to be how I'm going to find the centre and area. I know the coordinates of P and Q so now I can relax. Um, we've had an idea, um, write down some geometry facts maybe. Um, it's a show that question so we should probably lay this out and actually write down this is a right angle so this is um, the angle in a semicircle, so PQ is the diameter, so the midpoint is the centre of the circle. Yeah, for a show that question, we should probably write out these reasons for why, why this is true. I worked out the equations of the perpendicular bisectors of the chords connecting each point to find the centre. And the chords. Oh, okay, yeah, sure, that works. Yeah, um, intersecting the perpendicular bisectors of the chords is quite a long phrase, but it's quite easy to do for this particular setup. Okay. Um, Matt says, yep, yeah, cool, right, okay. I think this is intersecting the bisect perpendicular bisectors of the chords. It's B over T, Q over T. It's also the midpoint of the line PQ because of that right angle fact. Okay, um, so that's my center. And then my radius is gonna be half of that distance or even 
So instead of finding the length, I could find the length PQ. So I've got a radius here. I've got a radius here. And I've also got a radius here. So I think I might just write down the length O M, if this is the point M, the point there, um, which feels like it might be slightly easier to do because it's root P squared plus Q squared all over T. Okay. At the radius, so the area is going to be something like pi r squared, something like that. And the center we already found is this. Center is m, the area, we're done. Okay, good. Oh, I need to find the equation. And once I found the equation, the center and radius of my circle, I could go, oh, I oh, know that it's x minus p over 2 squared plus y minus q over 2 squared is equal to r squared up there and then simplify um, and show that that's equivalent to the equation here um, there's a suggestion in chat though that we could just check that this equation we could check that this equation works so here's a kind of alternative way I'm going to go up here um, alternative Um, x squared minus px plus y squared minus qy equals zero is a circle. It is a circle. <laughs> That's important. It's not just some random shape. I'm going to check that all three points lie on it. Um, naught naught is on this curve. P naught it works as well. It's on this curve, and so is naught q. And then I probably want to include a sentence to say something like circle that goes through these three points is unique. I probably just want to claim that at that level. Um, so the circle that goes through three points is unique. So this circle is the circle in the question. Um, so that's a slightly different approach to say, um, I'm going to take the circle you've given me and the equation you've given me and show that they describe the same circle. Um, I think that works though. Um, okay, we've got an inequality proof. So let's write out again. <laughs> Emery, I should probably have done this differently. Um, that's the area of C from the previous part of the question. Um, and it also asks us about the area of the triangle OPQ. And it wants us to prove that that fraction is bigger than or equal to pi. And the thing I'm thinking of here is that this feels like one of those geometry questions that turns into a turns into a algebra question. So you know, you've done some you've done some geometry to find out expressions for some of these things in the question, but then when you're actually manipulating the objects, you're doing kind of math level algebra. Um, so we're going to do we're going to do a proof now to prove that this expression we just found in C um, is bigger than some other expression in terms of p and q. Okay. Let's give that a go. I guess I want the area of triangle OPQ. And hopefully everyone can work out the area of triangle OPQ. It's P times Q over 2. This is a right angle triangle. If you haven't already spotted it's a right angle triangle, this would be a great point to spot that it's a right angle triangle. Okay, so here's how I might lay this out. Um, something like we want to show that pi p squared plus q squared over 4 over pq over 2 is bigger than or equal to pi. Equivalently, we want to show that, so I'm going to simplify this thing on the left a bit, p squared over q squared um, over 2pq is bigger than or equal to 1. I think I've divided each side by pi. Yes if I've done that right. We've got um, something we want to show. I'm being quite careful here. Um, this sort of reasoning is something I see quite a lot. Um, it's actually quite hard to lay it out with it being clear what you mean. Um, if you're not careful, then you just sort of write down the thing in the show that question and then write down a bunch of other stuff and then stop writing if you don't explain what you're doing along the way. Um, so show that question is we need some sort of expl explanation of why this is true. Okay, um, P and Q are positive, I'm being really careful, so this is equivalent to p 
squared plus q squared is bigger than or equal to 2pq. I can multiply it by that positive number. I'm being super careful now. They're positive and they're not zero. Okay, so we want to show that p squared minus 2pq plus q squared is bigger than or equal to zero. Oh, but that, this is just p minus q squared. And squares are positive. So great news, final line, which I've run out of space for. So this is all true. Okay, so you're allowed to work like this so long as you um, explain that the steps you're taking are equivalent and have some sort of conclusion line at the end to say, oh, I've reduced this thing you wanted me to prove to something that's really obviously true, like one is bigger than zero or squares are positive or something like that. Um, and everything was equivalent and this last statement is true, so everything is true. It's important to put something like that at the end, otherwise you're just working from the thing we asked you to prove and working towards something without showing that you know that because this is true, everything you previously wrote was true. Um, alternatively, you could do this in rough and then rewrite it the sort of correct way around where you start with the true statement and magically rearrange it into the thing that you're asked to prove. Um, that's an alternative. Someone in chat has asked, yeah, can we write this out backwards? Um, and that's perhaps easier to lay out, but I think for most people, I, I mean, unless you could see where this was going, it's hard to know where to start writing. Um, unless you do something like this in rough work first and then write it out the other way around. Um, for me, my method for writing stuff like this is more like I write down something like this quite scrappily and then I go back and I fill in words and I make sure that if I reread it, it's clear what my reasoning is for why this thing's true. Um, so because I'm quite sloppy, I might have just written this down without taking so much care with all the words, um, but then I need to go back and check that actually this whole argument reverses properly. Um, this is something that mathematicians worry about quite a bit. Find all possible values. I've rephrased this part of the question slightly. I think it was phrased a little bit strangely back in the day. Um, I'd like all possible values of tan OPQ, that's this angle, tan OPQ, if that fraction is exactly equal to two pi. Please can you find all possible values of this? Um, right, we're going to do um, tan OPQ is equal to, I think people in chat have spotted that this is equal to Q over P. Um, and this relationship that we had before says that P squared plus Q squared, we want this thing, I've just written that out again, to be equal to 2 pi. Um, so we want to solve this for Q over P. Okay, fantastic, off we go. Um, and the reason I'm relaxing a bit for this part is that I'm pretty sure, if I've done this right, ooh, have I done this right? If I've done this right, then I'm hoping that this will just turn out to be a quadratic equation. It kind of looks a bit quadratic, right? Because of the p squared and the q squared. I'm hoping that it's just a quadratic equation for q over p. Um, okay, so it's gonna be, um, we're gonna divide by pi again. Um, what do I want? I want uh, p squared plus q squared over pq. It's gonna be equal to four. Um, I can rewrite that as p over q, plus q over p is equal to 4, which I suppose if I call this u or something. Have I used u yet? Nah, new letter. u plus 1 over u is equal to 4. Now it really looks like a quadratic equation, right? Especially if I do that. Um, so I can solve this quadratic equation and say this is 2 plus or minus b squared minus 4ac is 1 minus 1, 4, 2, 3. Okay, um, that's q over p. That's tan tan OPQ. Okay. Original question I think asked for um, the uh, something about the actual angle, um, which is a bit much. So it asked for the angle, but then the official solution says we weren't expecting you to actually work out the angle, which I find a bit confusing. Um, the actual angle is something like that's 15 degrees or something, or the other one. One of the solutions is 15 degrees, and the other solution is some other angle. 75 degrees, I think, maybe? Yeah, I think, I think, um, I think this is a fact. You can check this. I 
think this is 75 and 15 degrees. Oh, that is not a fact that I was expecting anybody to know. So I rewrote the question to be in terms of just find just find me tan theta and then stop. Um, okay. Um, I guess homework problem. Uh, homework. Tan of 75 degrees, tan of 15 degrees. I'm not actually sure we've got the tech to work that out. If you've seen double angle formula, if you've seen double angle formula and you've seen angle addition formula, then give this a go. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then ignore that. Ignore that homework box over there. Just ignore it. We'll get to it at some point, but not right now. Cool. Okay.